All right, what's going on, YouTube? So we're back at it again for another Bag for Blood. Uh, not deck build video today, but we're working on to uh, the second checkpoint inside of Act 1 on Nightmare. How to progress through this now. There's going to be a good bit of skipping during this video. I'll do show as much gameplay as I need to, but without skipping, it's going to be a really long video. Imagine not a lot of people are going to want to have to see the whole gameplay because there are a few moments where it's kind of just looting getting a few things done, just clearing out some of the special infected and regular infected with the starting mission. One of the big things at the buy station, if you see offensive uh, accessory upgrade, we want to get that to at least green. We're going to need that for the final mission before the second checkpoint. If you can find that at any one of the uh, safe houses, pool your money together and buy that up as soon as possible because we're absolutely going to need that at the very ending mission. That's one thing to note about this. Now, when it comes to the uh, first checkpoint, you're going to have more cards. You're going to have uh, a bit more to work with. And the deck we're using is the same one that we used in the Act 1 checkpoint, just making it to the first Act 1 checkpoint. If you haven't seen that video, I'll leave a link down in the description so you can go check that out and use the same deck so that's what I did use for this uh, continuation onto the uh, second checkpoint. Now, when I did join this match, I th I had one other person I did queue into randoms, and I will say it's going to be a lot harder if you queue into randoms and that person leaves or the rest of the team leaves, considering it's still going to think that you have more players with you. So when it comes to certain missions along this way, there's going to be more objectives that you'll need to get done, which can be a bit harder for you, but I ended up doing quite well soloing it. But at this point, you can already see the breaker is not going to be too hard. Just keep your distance. Take him down with shots. You're going to have help from the people on top of the gas station as well. He's going to slowly dwindle. We're not going to have the most damage at this point with this deck, but we're going to have enough in order to take him out. For now we're going to skip ahead. Hold on. Just loot a bit. You'll have a few moments to uh, get a bit of a breather, get some ammo. One huge thing about having bots with you is that they have pretty much infinite ammo. So say you have a few friends you want to go with, it might be a good idea to keep at least one of them being in a bot, just rolling as a three-man team, because ammo is going to get pretty scarce pretty quickly, and you're going to be using a lot of it. As you'll notice, there's a lot more common infected coming. The special infected are going to take a lot more of your rounds. And it's going to eat into that supply pretty quickly. And keep in mind, there's going to be sleepers just about everywhere. You'll notice, I mean, we've got one, two, and then down the same alleyway, we're going to see about three more all the way along. We're going to skip forward, you'll clear this area out, clear the next area out, and then move in front of the liquor store. Clear everything out because as soon as you hit that door to open it up and get the people inside, there's going to be a horde coming and you don't want the rest of these zombies laying out here because that door is going to open up pretty slowly. And the worst thing about it is there's going to be at least two hawkers behind that door as soon as you open it. Could even be a third one as well as a crusher. So you're going to need to be ready for that. And you don't want anything behind you hitting you, tagging you, and possibly not giving you the ability to escape in that moment. We're going to skip forward, clear all this out, clear the sleepers out. But as soon as we get to this point and open the door, you're going to back up, look underneath the door, and on this right side, these two hawkers are going to come out for you. You can already see one of them spitting right now. And I believe there is three of them. Take two down, and then there's even a third one right there, sometimes even a crusher. Now straight away, you'll want to go into this next room and grab this person off the wall because they're going to help you grab the other people off the wall, or they're just going to help you in the gunfight to come. It's just going to be more bodies to kind of heat keep around as meat shields in a way let them get attacked by things like i said sleeper is going to be a problem going to need a lot of stun guns pain meds are going to be essential and pipe bombs for those very emergency moments if you can clear clear you want those pipe bombs only for say if someone's down or it's a random horde somebody hits an alarm door something like that but there's going to be multiple special infected coming in and there's going to be another two hawkers that are going to be on each other person the one in the back right corner and the one in the cooler now there's going to be an alarm door on the cooler every single time so keep that in mind if you come in there hot and heavy don't don't keep shooting on that left side you may hit that door and it's just going to make problems it's just going to make the whole run a lot worse for you but by this point 
you'll clear the special infected, grab the last person, and then it's just going to be a straightaway right out of there, back to the safe room around the corner. Smooth, easy run. And we're going to skip forward. Now, like I said before, if you do have the offensive accessory upgrade available for the team inside of the safe room at this point, if you haven't already gotten it, buy that up. My strat for this, if we don't have that offensive slot in there, is to just buy pipe bombs and pain mitts. You're going to need it. There's going to be a lot of infected coming in here, and there's going to be a timed horde as well. When it comes to this mission, you're going to have to close up these library windows pretty quickly. Now, when you are in Nightmare and you go into randoms, if every one of the teammates leaves, you're still going to have six windows to cover up, whereas in solos, you'd only have four. Now, you can solo this mission. I did this and did it pretty smoothly. It wasn't too bad. I already run it about two times. So the big thing is just knowing where the windows are at. They're going to be in a random location each time. So if you have one or two other buddies with you, make sure, especially if you have three, make sure one guy is kind of going around, kind of clearing stuff, getting the sleepers off the walls and finding where the windows are while the other two continuously board them up because you can essentially close these up before even the first horde comes. And if you can get that done, you can save a lot of problems, a lot of health taken from this, a lot of trauma that could be avoided. It's one of those better things. But immediately I just throw a pipe bomb in, kind of clear out some of the common infected so I can move around, get rid of the sleepers, and then start covering up these windows. Now, you'll go straight in. There's going to be a lot of sleepers. There can be some dark moments. It, it's pretty closed in. Things can go pretty poorly pretty quickly. But at that same point, we've got to start covering up these windows. I'm going to skip through a bit of this because it's essentially the same thing over and over, just covering up windows. But we have a moment where a horde comes. Now, if you're on the second story, and you'll notice behind this, there's a ladder. If a horde does come, climb up this ladder and make this kind of like your last stand. Because you can funnel all the zombies coming through that ladder. And even the special infected will be coming up there. Make sure the teammates are close. Make sure they're able to get in as well. But you're going to be able to funnel them here, here pretty quickly, and it's going to be a lot easier than if you just try to take them on on any one of the other floors. Now, if you're on the bottom floor when this happens, I suggest running back to the safe room and funneling them inside of that area in order to keep everybody maintained at a higher bit of health and to essentially keep that distance between the enemy and you. Now, spitters are going to be a serious issue and nightmare. They take about 20... 25 damage per spit and they can spin them out pretty quickly so you, you want to take those down pretty really fast as fast as you can honestly because i've had more than a few runs fail just because of those spitters and nightmare we're going to skip forward by this point we've closed up all of them what we want to do is go down get some of those uh meds that we may have dropped i've already used them by this point like I said, we, we dropped about four of them in there. I've had to take all of them by this point, except for one. You can already see the bruisers dealing some serious damage. But what you want to do is open that door and throw a pipe bomb out, get a couple of the common infected out there, and then kind of pull some of the special infected that are hanging around there to this doorway, funnel them there so you can kill them without having the issue of something going wrong. I got one of them right there, but a second one was right behind. Spit that acid. Jump up on that railing. Generally, they can't get you from that angle. So you just need to clear that out. Now, from this point, there are going to be some sleepers near the door. That's going to be the next safe room you'll need to get to. So try to take some of those out if you can see them from this distance right now. Just in case that final moment, there could be a horde on your heels. So you want to make sure that you don't have to stop running. You don't have to shoot something along the way. Well, what I did was I always take this left side. I just kind of take all the way down the road, up and around the corner, take out some of the sleepers, special infected, and we'll be straight into the alleyway on the left. I want to make sure that we get this visually done right. Well, we'll get to this, go down this alleyway. Sometimes there's a couple of sleepers. You'll skip forward. There'll be a couple of sleepers on the semi as well. Take those out pretty quickly. Now, you want to kind of time this with the incoming horde. You'll notice on the left side, there's a timer ticking down right now. You essentially want to blow it up right about within five seconds, so that way you're getting only one horde and you're not getting two hordes. As soon as you blow that, it's going to call the horde. 
But if you still have some timer left on that, sometimes it will call another horde while you're in the middle of this mission. And the big thing about that is you need to clear this building in order for the people at the apartment to come outside. And so that then you're available to run to the safe room. That's that's going to be the fastest strat. But if you do have some special infected in here, you can already see it's a closed in environment. If there's a bruiser inside here, or something else, you've got hawkers, stalkers, any number of things it can be very problematic and it can go pear-shaped pretty quickly. So you want to take care of that, then move your way all the way up to the top. And I think right about this point, I get to the final stairwell. And right on the right, if the black door opens, it's time to book it. Get out of there. As soon as that door opens, you're ready for that safe room and just make your way down. Now, best strap for me was to jump down and go onto the semi so I don't take fall damage. You don't want to take any more damage than you need to, especially if there's a horde on your heels. Maybe there's some common infected out here. You don't want to be one shot when it comes to go into this room. Now you notice on the right side, there's another sleeper, but we already took out that one on the left. If that was a moment where there was a horde on my heels, it could be a problematic one since I had to slow down. Who knows how close they would have been behind me, but that one bit of slow could really affect you. Now we're on to the jukebox mission. Now a lot of people probably have a hard time with this, but there is some easy ways to get this done. I did finally get this done solo with this deck inside a nightmare. Couldn't believe it. Pretty much uh, I didn't have a whole lot of help from the bots. There were a few moments where the bots went down. Like I said before, if you see that team uh, offensive slot or an offensive upgrade, grab that up. One of the Better things about this mission, if you already have that, grab up some of those barbed wire or have one person on your team, grab up a couple of them and throw them down the stairwell. Try to move them over to where you can get them into the jukebox area. Sometimes there'll be some barbed wire there as well, but you want to put that around the jukebox. So we'll skip forward, get to the point where we're at the jukebox, just clear the area, make sure you take as little damage as possible considering you want the most health for this mission. But you jump in, you kind of loot the area, look for any defensive equipment, healing equipment as well. You notice behind the bar there's a, plenty of uh, Molotovs, there's a couple of grenades, there's ammo distributed everywhere. But another moment where you're going to want those uh, bots around in order to get that infinite ammo. We'll continue on, set up a couple of jerry cans and some uh, propane tanks to help clear out those special infected and choke off certain points where we know the common infected are going to start pulling in because they're going to come in from front, back, left, right, just about everywhere as long as that jukebox is running. Now one thing to note is if the jukebox gets damaged and it does stop playing, there will be a little lull period where it'll be a bit calm. You can clear out the special infected, say someone's down, and then it breaks. It'd be a good idea to not immediately jump on and turn the jukebox back on but res that person give them a little heals and then turn it back on so then the horde's going to commence again now my whole strat on this mission i didn't even have any barbed wire to protect the uh, jukebox but i pretty much stayed behind the bar for pretty much the whole mission it's a good idea to have two people behind the bar and then if you have two other people with you you want them kind of running around the outside kind of luring the special infected so you can take care of the common infected and they can just keep using that mobility to their advantage and pulling these people and pulling or uh, firing shots as they can to put DPS down on those special infected and kind of clear out. Now once I started it, a lot of the time I was going to be behind the jukebox. As you can see, just clearing as much as I can. Keep one person on the left side and one person on the right. This person should be able to take care of that left side, but... At that same point, those two people that may be running around the building or locking down some of these corridors, you want their help to team shoot on some of those special infected. I did go down in this mission. Evangelo went down as well. The bots, I don't know what they were thinking. It took them quite a while. I'm going to skip forward here because you can already see it's, it's taken a minute. They finally got Evangelo. Now finally Walker's grabbing me. Now by this point, the jukebox has broken down. You can see... It's a bit of a lull period. You're able to breathe for a moment. People get healed. You've got the reses done. Time to start it back up. Now at this point, I thought I was just about finished, but we still have a whole nother busload of people to get ready. And at, at the time when this happened, I just started using those Molotovs. I thought we were just about at the end, but you can see you can kind of 
choke off these points with those Molotovs once you've ran out of the jerry cans. It's a good idea to keep some of those uh, Molotovs continuously going just to keep those common infected out and put some extra damage on the special infected just to weaken them before they even get close, before they can get close to the jukebox itself. We'll skip forward a bit. Essentially, that's going to be the whole strat. Sometimes you'll need to move out a little bit. Special infected move into your area. You're going to need to have that mobility to move out, clear, and then take down the special infected. Now, this is a final person that needs to get on the bus to load out. And one thing to keep in mind, once I got this done, the Jeep will not, or the Humvee will not be immediately available. So you'll kind of need to dance around this. Keep this in mind. If you still got a pipe bomb, this might be a good moment to either toss it or just wait, kind of clear some of those common infected. But as soon as this happened, I had one person join me. Luckily, they weren't the worst random in history, so they did help me quite a bit going forward. But it's just two of us, and that that's crazy to me that we can make it as a two-man team or even those first two missions can be a bit of a solo. Not too hard. Just keep your wits about you, keep the health and maintain that ammunition supply from the bots. Now for this next mission, all we're gonna have to do is essentially grab two boxes. I'm not gonna show a lot of the footage from this. It's a bit of a, a lucky run on this one. We, we had some trouble with having a hag inside of this mission, but you can still get it done. We'll roll in and we'll do much like the first mission, but instead of going right at the end of the alley, we'll be going in a door on the left side now we'll skip forward, make sure I can get the uh, door. It'll be this door on the left side. It may be alarmed, there may be some sleepers behind it, but that's the door you're gonna take. And then once you get into this portion, it can be difficult to find, but essentially what you wanna do straight off the bat is kinda clear out. Hopefully you won't have a hag, hopefully you won't have snitches, because that's what we ended up having in the corruption cards, and I mean, Somehow we still ended up making it. I mean, you can already see that hag. Bit of problematic. Bound one of the boxes straight off the bat, though. Had some problems. Started getting myself into a corner. This is generally not a good idea. I didn't really know this area all too, way, all too well, but was able to hold back a little bit. Use that knife to your advantage and just keep those people at bay. Now, from that point, you'll just run it to the safe room. You could essentially just stay locked in the safe room and let the other guy get the uh, other one, which is pretty much what I was going to do. But that didn't end up working. We ended up having some issues. I had to get a bot in order to go out and grab this up. I died as the bot. He finally somehow found me later on. He ends up dying. And then it's all up to me at a certain point. Yeah, you can already see he's dead. I'm still running around. I don't know where this last box is. It was pretty much near impossible to find. But I did find out that it was essentially right outside the very beginning. Hold on, we'll skip to it. And I came over to this spot, and I finally looked back, and it was right next to the entrance where we came in. I had looked pretty much everywhere else. Somehow wasn't getting attacked by hordes. The snitch didn't get alerted. Barely made it. But thankfully, we made it through that. Now this is going to be the hardest part of this entire run to the next checkpoint. It's going to be where you have to hold out for six minutes at this diner. It's why I keep saying you're going to need to buy up that upgrade for the offensive accessories. This is going to be a huge help. At this point, I would argue, don't even buy pipe bombs. Just grab up the barbed wire as much as you can. If you have three people with you, have one person grab a pipe bomb. We got super lucky. I honestly uh, hadn't even planned to even make it past this mission. I was essentially using this as a test run. I wasn't sure if we'd even make it. But we ended up finding barbed wire next to the, uh, or at the location for this. But what I did was get up on top of this. I tried to essentially kind of run this in a way kind of speed run all the way over to make sure that I could get up on top of this vehicle, drop this, and be able to shoot behind me and take care of some of those. I used the pipe bomb right there just to clear some of them out, make sure that we didn't have anything that we needed to worry about except for the horde that's going to come behind this door once you open it up. Now once that's done, 
I had found a jerry can, used that to kind of funnel them through in that point, but the jerry can really wasn't doing all that much. But at, as you can see, it, it's getting pretty hectic right now, but you'll still be able to manage. You have the right amount of cards by this point, the right amount of damage, and with cooperation and absolute solid teamwork, you can make it through this without taking too much damage. Now again, you're still going to need to carry these uh, boxes all the way to the location. But if you take it kind of slow and steady, you'll be able to make it through this fairly easily. Now I'm not exactly sure what happened up here. I'm pretty sure the other guy I was with ends up getting downed. I think he went into the locked room. Like I said before, he's not talking to me, so I didn't even know what was going on. But you'll have a moment to kind of hold off right here, shoot the alarm door, and you'll find soon enough no you'll be able to funnel them right here, keep it pretty steady, keep your distance, and maintain pretty high health. I, I don't know how he got downed over there. He ended up dying. Bit of a nightmare. I thought, you know, that's that's where this is probably going to be uh, the problematic moment. Luckily, the bot went over and grabbed that. Actually, no, he took control of one of the bots. I didn't even notice that. Honestly, this whole time I thought a bot actually grabbed that box for me. But we find out that his character's on the other side. We're going to have to move in. But you'll notice it's another alarm door. Now, if you don't have a toolkit for this, you're going to have to deal with this the old-fashioned way. I thought there may be some zombies in there, so I shot next to the door. Nothing, sadly. So we had to shoot through it, got that one down, and just kind of held out in the corner for a bit cleared as much as I could. We did take a bit of damage from this, but it wasn't the worst thing possible. Now we're going to skip forward a little bit. Now what you want to do is pretty much clear the area. You, I found some fireworks. If you have a pipe bomb by this point, could be a good idea to use it here, kind of clear some of these out. But this firework, these fireworks did not clear all of them, but you really do want to make sure that you clear this whole area so you can loot everything from the area. You want all the defensive equipment you want all the healing, you want to, we'll show you what you need to do with the ammo as well. But by this point, we clear this area, we drop that down, you can see all the ammo, we've got certain attachments, we've got grenades, pipe bomb, I think, as well, or not a whole lot, but enough to help manage during this moment. Well, what you're going to want to do is get into this left corner over here, and you want to make sure... This is why you wanted the upgraded barbed wire. Now, I got really lucky in this moment. I was able to reuse this about four times. You're not always going to be able to use it about four times. I just got really lucky with the reuse on it. Now, luckily, the other person had more as well. But like you saw right there, I only got to use that second barbed wire one time. I got really lucky with the other one. That's why I say two people should have at least two of those if possible, if not both of them having one and having those upgraded. So that's going to help slow the zombies coming in and be able to, because nothing's going to spawn behind you at that point. As long as you carry all the ammunition over there, carry all the explosives, explosive accessories over there, anything healing, go and drop it behind that barbed wire because you're going to need it for this entire mission. And it's another key moment where you do want at least one person being a bot because that infinite ammo is going to help greatly in this moment. But as you can see, grab up some stuff, play some key things like jerry cans inside of the uh, barbed wire, get the minigun, and prop that up right in front. That way you can use that for the special infected, because the special infected bruisers, things like that, can push through that barbed wire pretty quickly. So you want to take them down fairly quickly, but the common are really going to be stopped. You're going to need to have continuous fire on them, though just to maintain because they will break through there'll be some moments if somebody or say everybody's stuck on reload you're going to notice those zombies coming in pretty quickly and if they breach in it's going to be a nightmare another thing to note friendly fire still a huge thing so if you're somebody that's close to the barbed wire and you know someone's behind you keep crouched down keep that head down make sure you're not taking any of that damage from the person behind you and if you're that person behind keep in mind that person down in front don't need to hit them. Really keep that aim in check. There's nothing worse than that moment when if somebody was to go down in this, honestly, I don't know how much time you'd really have in order to grab them. You'd need a pipe bomb or something else to distract some of the enemies. Special infected could be coming around the corner as well. But 
essentially this is all you're going to do. You can see we've already pulled all the ammo into this corner. We've pulled the offensive accessories. We've pulled the healing objects over here. And we're just going to use the bot mom to drop all that ammo that we need. And you'll just keep firing on that left side. Maintain that right side as well. Some of the common can get over that truck. So you'll need somebody over there holding that down. But for a lot of this, it's going to be fairly easy. Just keep in mind, don't shoot your teammates in front of you. It's going to be severely damaging if you do. But just maintain this on the left. And maintain that right corner as well. And use the minigun only for the special infected. You don't want to use that and waste it on the common infected. It's just wasted on them. But this is the easiest strat to get it done. I and mean, We had a few moments where it was kind of iffy. But for the most part, for the rest of this, I mean, this is as smooth as it gets. I think I did shoot some of my teammates a, a few times, which, you know, oops, my bad. But sometimes that might happen. But do your best not to. Like I said, bruisers can move in. But this is it, man. It's as easy as could be. Just keep laying down that fire, keeping that horde at bay. And it's going to feel pretty easy. I, I was surprised how easy this was, how lucky we got when it came down to those barbed wires. But that's how you make it to the second choice checkpoint i know this is a super long video if anybody wants the full gameplay of this just let me know in the comments i'll post that up or you can go over to the vods at twitch and be able to check this out yourself if you have any questions about the the deck obviously i'll leave a link down in the description to the first video showing off the deck and what you'll need to use everything that i did use was in order with the deck and how it's laid out um or laid out in order and at the same point, if you have any questions, obviously hit the link in the description for my Twitch. Follow me up over there. I'll be happy to answer any questions over there as well. Now tomorrow, we or today, we will not be doing uh, any nightmare runs. But on Sunday night, we will continue the nightmare runs, pushing into Act 2, and then hopefully pushing further into Act 2 and getting more checkpoints out of that. If you like these videos, let me know, and I'll keep producing each one to kind of do a little tutorial on how to make it through to each one of these checkpoints and how to utilize you and your team's abilities to the best for uh, completing these or any kind of cheese moments because it seems like Nightmare is going to be one of those difficulties where it's going to be cheesy decks, it's going to be cheesy things that you're going to have to do in order to even make it through because without this strat, honestly, I don't think this mission's very viable it's not something I don't think it's not something I think you can actually make it through without using this type of strat. So it's one thing to keep in mind and you already notice there's more than a few missions before we even getting to this point. There's gonna be a lot of trial and error, but this should help you out, give you a little bit of an understanding, and I hope it's helped you. And as always, hope you guys have a good one.